Take a look at both of these games and tell me which one is the real deal. And when I say real deal, I mean which one is an officially licensed cartridge, not a bootleg counterfeit. And if you're still not sure what we mean by that, well, we're really glad that you're watching this video. For those of you unaware, bootleg video games are counterfeits, knockoffs, imitations of the real thing. They usually play about as well as the originals, but occasionally you'll run into compatibility issues, bugs, and errors that aren't found in the original game. And when it comes to collecting video games, it's like having a fake Michael Jordan, or nowadays a fake first edition Charizard in your collection. It's just not the same. Plus, they're also not even legal. Bootleg video games have been infiltrating the market for a while now, but are becoming more prominent than ever thanks to help from online storefronts and due to the fact that old games are just harder to find and are getting more expensive than ever before. Some sellers online are even trying to pass them off as the real deal, and sadly many consumers are falling victim to them. And so if you're going to shell out some cold hard cash for your favorite retro games, you're going to want to make sure that they're legitimate. But how do you know what signs to look for, especially when bootleggers continue to refine their work, and it makes it harder to tell the difference between the real deal and the bootleg? Now sadly, there isn't a magic marker that you can just draw on a retro game with to find out if it's real like you can with some fake money, but we do have a few strategies that we think you can use to help weed out the fakes. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you some tips and tricks that should help you spot bootlegs when you're out and about in person or online shopping for your favorite retro games. One of the best ways to spot a bootleg is to learn what makes Nintendo's cartridges legitimate in the first place. What should a label look like? Are there any details on the cartridge I should be looking out for? So in this video, we're going to be covering a number of different Nintendo platforms. But starting off, we're going to be talking about the system that's most commonly bootlegged, the Nintendo DS. These tiny little cartridges thankfully have a few dead giveaways that should help you tell the difference between an official cart and a fake one. On the bottom of the label, you can find a string of letters and numbers starting with NTR, which actually stands for Nitro, the DS's original codename, followed by a four character product number, then the region the cartridge was released in. For example, every copy of The World Ends With You in its respective region should have the same code. Unless a revision was released, you may find a number one tagged on at the end of the code, like with this copy of Yoshi Touch and Go. Now, if you look at the back of the cartridge, you'll find another code that should start with the same product number found on the front. For example, a legitimate copy of Digimon World Dawn should have the numbers and letters A3VE on the front and also on the back. But on this copy, the product number doesn't match, making it a clear bootleg. This number on the back is also printed with some pretty light ink, which can wear away over time with handling or if you happen to clean it with rubbing alcohol or something of that nature. So if you find a game without one, that doesn't mean it's necessarily a fake either. But if you find one with an incorrect number, then that's a clear sign. However, some bootleggers are learning about this and are getting smarter. This copy of Pokemon Diamond has the correct number on the front and the back, but that still doesn't mean we should trust it. If you're still suspicious, the next thing would be to compare the game to another copy that you know to be genuine. Let's say you have a friend who you know has bought it at retail, or if you can find some authentic photos online. Now, if you look closely, you can actually tell the Pokemon Diamond logo in the background is blurry, as if the image was copied or manipulated. And on a genuine copy, the image is clear as day. This fake copy of Digimon World Dawn also has a blurry image. And on the backside, the Nintendo logo and patent pending details aren't as glossy or prominent as they are on a genuine cartridge either. And if you ever happen to pop in, let's say your copy of Pokemon Soul Silver, and it claims to actually be Cory in the house on the home menu, that's pretty suspect too. Some Pokemon games like Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Black, Black 2, White, and White 2 also came in special black cartridge shells, which can help determine their legitimacy. So if you ever find one of those games with a gray cartridge, that's a dead sign as well. And if you actually take one of those cartridges and hold it up to the light, it should shine through a clear purple almost. Sort of like holding a hundy up to the light to check and see if Yokai Franklin is hiding, staring at you, watching your every move. 
Now we have a few more things to talk about with the DS, but for now, we're gonna switch over to the Game Boy Advance, which is also pretty ripe with counterfeit cartridges. And some of them are getting pretty hard to tell the difference these days. On the front of every single officially licensed Game Boy Advance cartridge, at least here in the US, you should be able to find the game's logo, maybe a picture of a character or some artwork, then the standard Nintendo logo, their seal of quality, the appropriate age rating symbol for that region, and a product number. So if you find a GBA game missing one of these features, it's likely a fake. For example, this Power Rangers Wild Force is missing the Nintendo logo and a product number. Mario Kart has no ESRB rating whatsoever. And if we take a closer look, the Nintendo official seal of quality actually says original. Original seal of quality. That is not correct. And then if we take a look at this copy of Super Monkey Ball Jr. and we compare it side by side to a real copy, well, this is just a bad batch of bananas I don't want anything to do with. Each and every authentic GBA game also has a number stamped into it, which can be hard to spot at a glance, but if you catch the cartridge in the right light, it'll appear nicely. Take these copies of Pokemon Fire Red. The real version actually has two sets of characters stamped on the right side, where the fake doesn't have any. And aside from that, this is a pretty convincing fake. The label doesn't shine as well as the real deal, the placement of the swirls in the background aren't the same, and it's pretty worn out up top, but to the naked eye, it's disgustingly close. Now the best way to tell a fake in most cases, which we couldn't really do on DS, but we can on Game Boy Advance, is to look at its board. By using a small tri-wing screwdriver, we can open up the back of the cartridge and compare the details of the board to photos of a proven legitimate copy. On the right is a real copy of Mario Kart Super Circuit, and on the left is a fake. That big yellow thing there is also a battery, which holds your save data intact. But not every Game Boy Advance game uses one. Most of the Pokemon games do, but surprisingly Fire Red and Leaf Green don't. They use flash memory. So the fact that this copy of Mario Kart has a battery in it is a dead giveaway that this is not legit. Plus, if we flip over the board, we can see a numbered sticker and E4 inked into the back. Official Game Boy Advance boards are not supposed to have those. You can also tell a fake board on a copy of Pokemon Fire Red or Leaf Green just by looking at the back of its board as well, without even taking off the shell. Both of these games should have four golden rectangles etched into the board on the left side, but both of these bootlegs we have are missing them and instead are littered with a slew of bright gold circles, which is an instant sign of of a fake. Now, of course, everyone wishes they never stepped on their original Pokemon game boxes or let their parents throw them out. And since so little of them were left in good shape because of this, video game boxes and manuals can be just as expensive or more than the games themselves and are also getting reproduced like Wildfire. From the front, it may be a little hard to tell which of these copies of Final Fantasy IV is fake, but one look at the back should give it away if you make the comparison. But of course, to the untrained eye, you may be none the wiser. And funny enough, the screenshots used on the fake box aren't even from the Game Boy Advance version of the game. The box is way more glossy too as the original box has a matte finish, and the cartridge features an entirely different looking label than on the real thing. There are so many things going wrong with this fake copy, so if you're ever at a store or purchasing a game online and it happens to be complete in box, it's always worth taking a look at the inside too to see if everything matches up. And while we're on the topic of boxes, take a look at this fake copy copy of Mario Party DS. The cover had the contrast dial turned up to 11, 12 maybe even. The spine is wrong, the back is wrong, the cartridge looks terrible, and the manual, oh, the manual features the entire IGN review of the game, accompanied by artwork from Super Mario Sunshine. You can't make, I can't make this up. How does this happen? Now, as far as original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games go, you can take a lot of the same information about Game Boy Advance games and utilize it for them too. This copy of Pokemon Gold may trick your grandparents, but it's not fooling any of us at this point. It's like a mashup of the North American and Japanese cartridge styles. And if the label itself isn't enough to throw you off, each Game Boy game should say Nintendo Game Boy at the top in the place where you're supposed to put your thumb when you pull the cartridge out. But this bootleg one actually just says Game Boy. And the cartridge isn't even gold. <laughs> what gives? 
Super Nintendo games also have their fair share of bootlegs floating around too, especially as they continue to get more valuable. This copy of Contra 3 has so many problems. The product code should have a CA in the middle of it, not ARM. The purple triangle is in the wrong place, the image is extremely blurry, and the label is unnecessarily glossy. The logo on the spine is cut off, and there isn't even a safety label on the backside. And there's supposed to be a Nintendo logo pressed into the backside of the cartridge's plastic as well. Another tell sign of a fake is the fact that every single Super Nintendo cartridge should have metal security bit screws on the front, keeping the game shut and secure. If you ever find one with plastic-like screws, that's a definite sign. The plastic screws aren't even real, and you can actually just pop open the cartridge with your hands. Now, when buying a more expensive game, like, for example, Earthbound, Hagane, Evo, or just something you suspect, it's usually a good idea to ask the seller if they verified if this is authentic, or to let you open the cartridge to verify the board is genuine. If you're buying from a store you genuinely trust, you shouldn't have to worry, but we've seen a few repros in brick and mortar shops before, so it doesn't hurt to be safe. All Super Nintendo boards should say Nintendo and the year that they were made somewhere on the board, and they should also feature a serial code. Now this code can appear on multiple completely different Super Nintendo games, but you can then take this code, search it on the SNES Central database, and you can find out if the game you're buying was ever produced officially with that type of board. If not, you may actually have a good old bait and switch on your hands where someone took an expensive rare game board and swapped it with John Madden football. In my experiences working at a retail game shop, for nearly a decade, this almost never happens. It was more likely to happen when video game rental stores were a thing, and Jimmy thought it'd be a good idea to pull a fast one on his local family video by swapping his copy of Super Mario World with Final Fantasy II because he wasn't ready to say goodbye to Cecil, Rydia, and Rosa just yet. And even so, most people back then didn't have access to security bit screwdrivers either, so it's a very unlikely thing, but good to keep an eye out for. Over the years, NES and more recently, N64 games have also fallen victim to bootleggers. Now, unfortunately, we don't have our hands on an example of either of those to show off, but if we take a simple browse through sites like eBay, they're pretty easy to find. Sellers often label them as brand new, and sometimes will note that their copies are in fact reproduction carts. But not all sellers are created equally. If you encounter one in person that you're worried about, you can always open up the board with the same style tool used for the SNES cartridges to make sure the board is authentic. One last thing that I wanted to highlight is this manual that I purchased for Silent Hill 4 on PS2 over on eBay. Now the listing itself didn't state that it was a reproduction, nowhere in the title, in the description, it wasn't labeled as new, but it looked fine. And then when it showed up, I realized the texture of the cover was glossy, almost like photo paper, unlike on a normal PlayStation 2 manual, it should be matte. And after flipping through it, I realized the inside cover actually states that it's a reproduction in bold letters. So you'll want to be careful when trying to complete your favorite retro games too. It never hurts to reach out to the seller and ask to find out if they know if it's genuine or not, or what their return policy might be in case if you get it and you find out it's not the real deal. You never know what you're going to find out there. Now, even though we've given you all of the tips we can, if you don't have one, we think your next step should be to buy a security bit tool set. Because you never know, some game stores for some reason might just not have one on hand. If you're buying a game from someone on Facebook or on eBay, you're not gonna have a store to fall back on to have one. So it's good for you to have a set like that. You should be able to find a set fairly easily online, or you can purchase the Bootleg Buddy set from Pink Gorilla Games. We'll leave a link in the description down below if you wanna pick up one of those for yourself. It's not a bad way to spend 20 bucks, and it could save you a lot later. It includes a tri-wing screwdriver, a 3.8 and a 4.5 game bit screwdriver for Nintendo games, but also consoles, and then a dual miniature flathead and Phillips screwdriver. But the set also includes a few reference cards that can help you identify a fake game on the fly. So now that we've given you every detail we can possibly think of about bootleg games, it's time to recap. First things first, when you find a game that you're suspicious of, it doesn't hurt to try and compare the game to a picture of a real legitimate cartridge you find online, or reach out to a community like on Facebook or on Reddit or a friend that you know that might also own the game. Step number two is to ask to take a look at the board inside of the cartridge, or ask if the person that owns the game has inspected it. 
And remember, you never want to come off as rude, so always remember to be kind. And don't do this on every single game you're buying. If you're buying 20 games from a store, and some of them are $5, and maybe one of them is $50 or $100 or something, you know, maybe do it on the games that are more important. But if you're ever suspicious of something, don't be afraid to ask. Step number three is if you're buying something online or in store, ask about their return policy. And if you happen to take it home and you find out it's a bootleg, what do you do then? If you happen to bring up these questions, the store employee, if they have time, they might be willing to test it on the spot there for you if they have a system hooked up. Obviously, from store to store, that's not always going to work. Employees aren't always going to have time to go above and beyond like that. But if they're a good store and they, they can help you, they definitely will. And step number four is to just do your research, be smart, and remember that we're all doing this just to have fun. And at the end of the day, that's exactly what this is all about, is just having fun. Now, thankfully, some systems like the Virtual Boy, the 3DS, and the GameCube are all pretty free of bootlegs at the moment, but that could change at any minute. Reproduction cartridges are becoming a bigger problem as time goes on, and bootleggers are continuing to get closer to the real deal every single day, I swear. Hopefully, sites like eBay start to crack down on people selling reproduction cartridges, but until that day potentially comes, we'll just have to make sure that we stay informed, continue to educate each other on the differences between between bootlegs and the real deal. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below if you learned something new today, and let us know if there's any tips or tricks that you think we didn't cover in this video that could help someone else in the future. Like I said before, I worked at a retro game shop for seven years. I also worked at GameStop for three, so I've seen a lot of bootlegs come in and out of the store, and so it brings me great joy to actually be able to share all of this knowledge that I've learned over the years with you. I also want to give a shout out to my friend Greg, who owns a store out in Green Bay, Wisconsin called Game Trade. If you're ever in the area, go check it out. It's an amazing place. He actually took a look at my script just to make sure that I was covering all of my bases that I at least could with the cartridges that I had and that I wasn't incorrect or, you know, missing any details. And of course, Greg and I are just humans. We could have missed something still, but thank you so much for checking it out. It means a lot. And his store is seriously, it's amazing. If you're ever in the area, go check it out. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and put that subscribe button underneath the microscope, compare it to another subscribe button and make sure you're actually subscribed because if not, you're, you're not going to be informed about our new videos and you don't want that, do you? Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time.